One of Washington, D.C.'s most significant landmarks is the Lincoln Memorial. How much do you genuinely understand about it, though? Come along with me as we examine the Lincoln Memorial's history and facts. Number 10. Timing wasn't everything here. When it comes to creating certain things in the world, particularly monuments made to honor particular people, it's crucial to get them started and opened on time or on a significant day for the person you're celebrating. In 1865, President Abraham Lincoln was assassinated and lost his life. Therefore, you would expect that the nation would want to commemorate this president as soon as possible if it actually liked him. To their credit, Congress ordered the creation of the Lincoln Monument Association less than two years after the former president's passing in order to supervise and build a monument that was genuinely deserving of him. Again, to their credit, they immediately began looking for someone who could create such a monument. But that's sort of where things went sideways, to put it mildly. In spite of the fact that everyone could agree that Lincoln deserved a monument, they couldn't agree on the type of monument that would serve that purpose or how it ought to be. What it ought to say Lincoln's positioning, among other things. To be really honest with you, it's all incredibly trivial, but it gets worse. As you can see, disputes often endure a few months or, at most, a few years. Although the association was founded in 1867, the project's real construction didn't start until 1914. That much time was spent arguing. But hold on things did better. Despite some of the monument's components being finished by 1917, World War I and its aftermath delayed the monument's completion and public unveiling until 1922. If they had been able to put their disagreements aside and complete it more quickly, can you imagine how much older the monument would be today? Number 9. The statue's original version was very different. Okay, I want you to envision what the Lincoln Memorial looks like right now. Do not deceive. Just visualize Lincoln's appearance, the environment he's in, the memorial as a whole, etc. Do you notice that it appears to be relatively simple when you consider the big picture of it all? Consider the fact that the monument is simply an image of Lincoln sitting in a chair next to some of his most well-known quotes. It closely resembles Lincoln and is quite straightforward and elegant. But that wasn't the statue's original design. You see, they actually did commission a man to create the monument during the time they were arguing over how it should look. His name was Clark Mills, and shortly after Lincoln's passing, he created an outstanding cast of the president's head, earning him the right to attempt to design the monument. He created the renowned Andrew Jackson statue as well. His idea for the statue, however, included a 12-foot likeness of Lincoln signing the Emancipation Proclamation and a collection of 36 bronze figures, six of whom were mounted, all contained within a 70-foot edifice. That stands in stark contrast to the current statue that we have. That almost seems like a whole menagerie honoring just one guy. Which, while reasonable considering Lincoln's position as a historical president, isn't enough. Naturally, that project vision was rejected, and the more straightforward design was finally accepted. Number 8. Location the Lincoln Memorial faced several issues during construction, as we've already explained rather adequately for you. However, another one came from a very unusual source and had a really good and sensible justification. You know, nobody could agree on a plan for the memorial project, so it was put on hold for a while. The association was eventually brought back together, but even then there were problems due to those attempting to disband it like Joe Cannon, the current Speaker of the House. For a variety of reasons, this man did not want the monument to be built. For instance, Cannon was a man who believed that the government shouldn't spend a lot of money on these types of monuments. However, when the new plans were made, West Potomac Park was one of the suggested locations for the statue. He once vowed to Secretary of War Elihu Root that he would never permit the construction of an Abraham Lincoln Memorial in that marsh. After certain compromises were made, he eventually agreed to support the project, and as a result, the Lincoln Memorial is now located near the western end of the National Park, where the surroundings are particularly stunning. 
so much so that the memorial is one of Washington, D.C.'s top tourist destinations. Number 7. Greek and Roman influences can be seen throughout the memorial. You might not immediately notice it when looking at the Lincoln Memorial, but many distinct pieces were made by a large number of people. The Picciarelli brothers, a dynasty of Tuscan marble carvers, carved the statue of America's 16th president under Daniel Chester French's design, and Henry Bacon designed the monument structure. But the influencer's role is not over at that point. The Picciarellis, for instance, made the decision to do something unique for the memorial's arm-shaped section. They were mostly placed on pillars that were painted to seem like Roman faces. These wood bundles served as a symbol during those eras of authority. That was an appropriate visual statement given that Lincoln was the President of the United States and that he utilized that power to free the slaves. You only need to look at the pillars that support the Lincoln Memorial to see examples of Greek architecture. Have you ever heard of the Parthenon, if it seemed to appear familiar to you? A memorial to the guy who protected democracy should be fashioned after a building from the country where democracy was originally practiced, according to the Greeks, who were one of the first civilizations to adopt democracy in its true sense. Number 6. Is the Lincoln Pyramid or a Temple? Do you recall when I mentioned how many people contributed to the project? And you'll recall that I said it took some time to decide on a design. Well, some of the participants in the initiative weren't contributing in that way. You see, the principal foe of the project's architect was a man by the name of John Russell Pope, Henry Bacon. In terms of some of the characteristics, Bacon's ideas were a little out there, but Pope was thinking way outside the box in terms of what he thought would work best for the memorial. For instance, the structure that was to house the statue of Lincoln contained elements from the Egyptian pyramid, the classic Mayan temple, and the Mesopotamian ziggurat. Do I really need to point out how bizarre some of those recommendations are? The main argument is that even though the U.S. contains people whose ancestry can be traced to Egypt, Mayan culture, or even Mesopotamia, that doesn't mean they merit inclusion in a monument honoring an American president. Just try to picture what those would have looked like, or how large they would have probably been if they had been built according to his opinion. Yes, we were fortunate that the Greek design was chosen. Number 5. Another notable Lincoln statue made by the French Daniel Chester French was chosen for the Lincoln Memorial Project in part because he was exceptionally talented at what he did. As a result, when he attempted to join in at the beginning of proceedings, more or less, he actually created a full-on monument for the association to view. This statue, unlike the one we are all familiar with, was made of bronze and depicted Abraham Lincoln standing straight with his hands at his waist and gazing downward. Definitely in a meditative or similar position. The statue obviously wasn't included in the main memorial. However, it was employed in Lincoln, Nebraska as a component of the state capitol, and you can still see it there today. The base that the statue sits on was also created by Henry Bacon. Number 4. Lincoln grew to fit the space in. Okay, let's return to visualizing the Lincoln Memorial. Not just the Lincoln statue, but the entire structure. You have to admit that the memorial has a lot of vacant space. That was partially done on purpose, but initially, it was supposed to appear very differently from Lincoln's point of view. You see, Lincoln himself was going to be roughly 10 feet tall when French first mocked out the monument in comparison to the edifice. It becomes a tall statue. Lincoln, however, realized that the grand aspect of the building was probably going to overwhelm him when Bacon completed the drawings and the breadth of the building itself. In order to avoid being outdone, he essentially doubled the scale of the Lincoln statue. The statue is now 19 feet tall as a result. It still appears somewhat little in relation to the building, but it is not at all where it would have been if it had been 10 feet. Number 3. The Basis IS 40% of the Monument What do you suppose the Lincoln Memorial's measurements are? As I've already mentioned, the statue is 19 feet tall. However, let's take a moment to concentrate on the building. How big do you think it is? 
The solution is 202 feet broad and 99 feet tall, which is undoubtedly a significant amount of room, but most people are unaware that a significant portion of the building is underground and hidden from view. Because you need to be sure you can support a building that size and weight, especially one constructed of marble. Consequently, there is a substantial fundamental slab underground. One that reaches 66 feet into the earth itself to ensure the security of everyone and everything there. Number two was linking using a sign language. You'll notice something intriguing if you focus on Abraham Lincoln's hands. The right hand's fingers are wrapped around the pillar and the left hand is primarily in a fist-like position. The left hand looks to be making an A sign, while the right hand appears to be making an L sign, if you concentrate even more intently and are familiar with American Sign Language. Many people have seen this over the years and questioned whether French is to blame. Although there is no concrete evidence that this was done on purpose, many individuals think it is true. Not the least of which is the fact that Abraham Lincoln supported sign language strongly in America. He cared so much about the death that he formed a school for it and assisted in writing its charter. French has also created a statue of the school's founder as if that weren't enough. Number one, in the end, timing did work out. Lincoln's assassination by John Wilkes Booth was a great tragedy, and Lincoln was one of just a handful of presidents who have ever been slain, which was one of the reasons many people wanted to erect a memorial to him. However, few people who truly knew Abraham Lincoln were able to see the monument's unveiling when it came to life in 1922 due to the extremely lengthy building and design process. His son was able to see it, which was the exception a really excellent exception. Robert Todd Lincoln, the last surviving son of Abraham, was able to witness the monument when it was made public in 1922. If that isn't a signature moment, I'm not sure what is. Thank you everybody for watching. What are your thoughts on these historical details and facts about the Lincoln Memorial? Are you awestruck by the statue's lengthy and erratic past? Have you discovered any new information about Lincoln or his memorial? Please let me know in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you on the channel again soon.